Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're going deep on a medieval mystery that blends uh, science and storytelling. Oh yeah, this one is pretty cool. We're talking poisoned wells, Viking power struggles. It sounds like a movie. It really does. And all of this centers on a new scientific study published in the journal iScience. So this study analyzed 800-year-old skeletal remains. Mm. They were pulled from a well in Norway. And get this. Okay, I'm listening. There's a chance these bones are connected to a dramatic event that was described in a Norse saga called Sverus Saga. I'm already picturing a royal castle siege, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wondering if we're about to uncover the truth behind a legend. What do you think? I think so. It's pretty amazing what they can do with science now. I know, right? It's like we have a time machine in a lab. Exactly. And the Sverus Saga isn't just some random tale. It's thought to have been written very close to the time of the actual events, maybe even with King Sverre looking over the writer's shoulder. Wow. So we're talking a potential first-hand account here. Pretty much. That's incredible. It's like reading a diary entry from a king. Exactly. Okay, so give us the lowdown. What went down according to this saga? All right, so Sverre's saga tells the story of King Sverre's rise to power. And there's this brutal conflict with a rival faction known as the Baglers. Now, in 1197, the Baglers, they besieged Sverre's castle near Trondheim. Okay, classic medieval warfare, yeah. sieges, battles. Exactly. But according to the saga, the Baglers, they decided to be a little more strategic than just storming the walls. Oh, this is where it gets interesting, I bet. They poisoned the castle's well, wow. cutting off the water supply for King's Fair and his warriors, the Birkbeiner. So a very clever tactic. And to make their message even more clear, the saga says they tossed a dead man into the well and then filled it with stones. Hold on. Hold on. The skeletal remains in the study. The ones from the, well, th those are dated back to 1197. You got it. Researchers use radiocarbon dating, you know, that measures the decay of carbon isotope. Right, to figure out how old something is. Exactly. And they were able to confirm that this man found in the well died right around 1197. It matches perfectly with the timeline from the saga. That's a pretty incredible coincidence. And it gets even cooler. They extracted DNA from those remains, and now we have a glimpse of what this guy might have looked like. Okay, let me guess. Tall Viking warrior probably had an epic beard. Well, we don't know about the beard, but they say he likely had blue eyes, maybe blonde or light brown hair, and his ancestry traces back to Southern Norway. Wait a minute, wasn't Southern Norway a Bagler stronghold? It was. If we're going by the saga, the Baglers were the attackers. They're the ones who poisoned the well. So was this man a Birkbeiner defender who just happened to have Southern roots? Or could he have been a bagler attacker? Took a real head scratcher. It is. Like, which side was he on? And radiocarbon dating, while incredibly accurate, does have a margin of error. Okay, so there's a little wiggle room in the dates. Usually within a few decades. But even then, the timing is still remarkably close. So we've got this scientific mystery woven into a historic saga. It's pretty wild. Where do historians who specialize in this period weigh in on all of this? What are they saying? Well, there's one historian who specializes in Old Norse literature, and even though they weren't involved in the study directly, they found the analysis quite compelling. Mm. But, and here's the catch, they brought up a very important point. Uh-oh, there's always a catch. They said that Sverre's saga, like a lot of royal accounts from back then, could be more propaganda than pure historical fact. They even compared it to, get this, a modern politician's autobiography. Okay, so maybe we need to take this saga with a grain of salt. It's a possibility. So that means if Svera saga was maybe designed to make King Svera look good, yeah, then maybe it's giving us more of his spin on events than a completely objective account of what happened. It's a perspective to consider for sure. That's fascinating. Yeah. So we need to figure out how much of this saga is true. Yeah. And how much is, shall we say, creative storytelling. Right. This is getting good. It is. Buckle up. It's a really important thing to think about, you know? And Kingsford wasn't the only one using a little historical spin back then. Right, right. If we look at other accounts from that time period, we find similar examples of, let's just say, creative liberties. Embellishing the truth a little. Exactly. Makes you wonder how much of what we call historical fact is actually just the version told by those in power. That's a good point. So how do we even begin to sort through that like as people trying to understand the past how do we deal with the fact that a lot of what we read could be biased I mean, we can't just toss out every historical account really. definitely not but it means we have to be really careful okay so how do we do that well this is where critical thinking becomes crucial 
we have to look closely at the source. Who's telling the story? What were their motives? Right. Like in the case of Severus Saga, we can't rule out the possibility that King's very wanted to make himself look really good. Of course. So maybe the saga downplays anything that makes him look bad or any questionable choices he made. So it's like a carefully curated image. Exactly. So getting back to the man we found in the face, well, what does all this mean for him? Does this whole idea of a possibly biased saga change how we view his story? Oh, it definitely adds a layer of complexity. In what way? Well, imagine for a moment that the saga is exaggerating how dangerous the Baglers were. Okay, I'm following you. Maybe poisoning the well wasn't this huge orchestrated attack that the saga makes it out to be. Right, right. So if that's the case, then maybe the man, in the well, maybe he wasn't a victim of this conflict at all. Oh, wow. I hadn't thought of that. He could have just fallen in accidentally or something. Or been, you know, put there for completely different reasons. Oh, exactly. Man, yeah. we started out thinking we were going to solve a historical puzzle, but it seems like the more pieces we put together, the more questions we have. And that's what's so cool about history. It's not just a bunch of fixed facts. It's this ongoing discussion. We're constantly reevaluating what we think we know as new evidence comes up or when we look at things from a fresh angle. So where does that leave us with this particular mystery? Hmm, that's a good question. We have this compelling scientific evidence that lines up really well with the dramatic saga. Yeah. But at the same time, we got to consider the possibility that the saga might be twisting the truth a bit. Absolutely. How do we reconcile those two things? It's a balancing act for sure but it shows just how interesting the connection between science and storytelling can be when we're trying to understand the past. Right. Science can give us hard evidence, dates, DNA, even a physical picture of what someone might have looked like. But historical narratives, even ones that might be biased, they give us context, motivation, a peek into the social and political stuff that was going on. It's in that space where science and storytelling come together that we often find the most insightful stuff. You know, now that you mention it, knowing that the saga might be embellished makes me even more curious about who this man in the well was. Me too. If he wasn't a victim of the Bagler siege, then what's his story? Right. And the fact that his DNA points to Southern origins just makes things even more interesting. Was he just traveling through? Was he a merchant? Could he have had family ties to both the Birkbeiner and the Baglers? It really highlights the human side of history. We're not just talking about nameless faces in a grand narrative. We're talking about individuals with real lives, families, their own unique stories. It's easy to forget that sometimes. It's a good reminder that history isn't just about kings and battles and all that political maneuvering. It's about the lives of everyday people who got caught up in those big events. Absolutely. And sometimes, like in this case, it's those individual stories that hold the key to unlocking a deeper understanding of the past. I mean, it's like we've stumbled onto a historical whodunit. Yeah. And the DNA analysis, it's like finding a fingerprint at the crime scene. Oh, totally. It gives us this real tangible connection to a guy who was walking around over 800 years ago. It's crazy what science can uncover these days. Yeah, I know. And the radiocarbon dating, even with that margin of error, Puts mm -hmm. us right there in that time frame, that window of time described in Sphere's saga. Right around there, yeah. But we also have to remember that the saga could be presenting a bit of a skewed version of things. For sure. So then how do we weigh that scientific evidence against a possibly biased historical narrative? It's like trying to solve a puzzle. Yeah. But some of the pieces might be leading you in the wrong direction. Yeah, that's the tricky part. That's what makes historical research so challenging, but also so exciting. Right. We have to be like detectives, you know? Yeah. Scrutinizing every piece of evidence, looking at where it came from, what its limitations might be. With its own little bias. Exactly. And in this case, we can't just toss out the saga completely just because it might be embellished. Right, right. It still provides valuable insights into the political climate back then, King Severe's motives, the whole dynamic between the Birkbeiner and the Boglers. So it's like the saga and the science are two halves of the same story. Yeah, I like that. We need both of them to get the whole picture. I agree. This deep dive has taken us from medieval warfare to DNA analysis. We've talked about historical bias, pondered the stories of people caught in the middle of those big historical events. It's been quite a journey. It has. What are some of the key takeaways you think people listening should walk away with? I think one of the biggest ones is the importance of interdisciplinary studies. Bringing together different fields? Yeah, exactly. Like archaeology, genetics, history, 
even the literature. When we can combine those different areas of expertise. We get a much richer, more nuanced understanding of the past. It's like assembling a mosaic. Oh, I like that analogy. Each individual piece might be beautiful on its own. Right. But it's when you put them all together, you get that full picture. Exactly. And I think another important takeaway is to think critically when you're looking at historical sources. Okay, so not just taking everything at face value. Right, we can't just blindly accept everything we read. Be a little skeptical. Yeah, consider who wrote it, their perspective, the social and political context at the time, how bias might have shaped their narrative. It's not just about what happened, it's about who's telling us what happened and why they chose to tell it that way. Absolutely, and one last point I think this case study really highlights is that history is about people. Not just events. Yeah. It's about real people who lived, loved, went through struggles, and ultimately left their mark on the world, even if it was a small mark. The man in the, well, whoever he was is a perfect example of that. I agree. His story, even though it's still a mystery, reminds us that the past was full of people just like us. With their own stories to tell. And their stories, even if they're incomplete or lost over time, they're still worth remembering. Well said. As we wrap up this deep dive, I'd like to leave everyone with a question to think about. Okay, fire away. Knowing that Svera's saga might be more spin than fact, does that change how you see the man in the well and the events surrounding his death? Does it make the mystery more intriguing or does it make you question the saga's account of events as a whole? That's a really great question for our listeners to ponder. And if you enjoyed this journey through medieval history and scientific discovery, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into all sorts of cool topics. Yeah, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Keep exploring, keep questioning, keep those minds curious. We'll be here.